today I'm going to tell you a story about the hypothetical compound design workflow. The steps of this workflow was carried out using Kemaxos Instant Jacob and Lexus Connect applications. So before starting the story, I will briefly introduce these two applications. Instant Jacob is a versatile chemistry desktop application designed to support a range of different chemical discovery workflows. It allows scientists to capture and analyze chemical and biological data, build and manage their own relational data models, and run powerful searches for information rich data visualization and on an operating system. In case of data handling, IGC can import and export numerous file formats and handle compound associated non chemical data. It can also make use of local or remote databases or even chemical cartridges such as Chemaxon Coral or PostgreSQL cartridge. IGC also provides powerful visualization tools. Chemical structures and the associated data can be visualized in a spreadsheet like format with sorting, conditional formatting, and removal and addition of columns. In custom form views, numerous widgets can be used, such as charts tables, matrices, to create the most efficient view of our data. IGC also provides flexible and extendable data retrieval options. Besides the different chemical search methods, such as substructure, duplicate, similarity, etc., joint queries containing other type of data and even advanced logical operators can be used. IGC also comes with several built-in chemistry tools. Through the chemical terms language, all calculated plugins of Chemaxon is easily accessible from IGC. Virtual libraries can be also rapidly generated to your database using IGC. It can be done through enumeration of microstructures or using the reaction between two or more reactants. Additionally, structures can be also analyzed using group analysis within IGC. Minireg is a mini registration system which can be used in IGC. It is a Chrome script extension of IGC developed and maintained by Chemaxon's professional services team. It can be used to store chemical entities using a hierarchical, structural, and also to associate structures with assay data. Additionally, Minireg also has some simple inventory management features through the handling of sample loads. Lexus Connect is an easy to operate web based extension of Instant Jacob for project teams working with chemical data. It can be used to access, display, search, and analyze scientific data. It seamlessly combines Chemaxon's chemioinformatics expertise with the technical benefits of a browser based environment. It accesses chemical databases designed and managed within Instant Jacob, making research data accessible in an online environment. It is a versatile system suited for workflow ranging from small teams to large corporations. In the rest of the presentation, I'm going to talk about the aforementioned hypothetical compound design workflow. This workflow starts with a predefined chemical space, the so called cluster 64. It is a small set of 86 structures with their associated permeability measurements. The dataset is derived from the NCATS parallel artificial membrane permeability assay data using a clustering algorithm. One interesting feature of the dataset is that it contains structures with a well defined chemotype, which is shown here. Here, the chemotype is defined quite well, and this will be the chemotype of this presentation. In this hypothetical study, we will use these 86 structures as an initial chemical space to find new compounds with high permeability. So after defining the chemical space, we will do an argon analysis to identify potentially favorable R groups for permeability. Then we will generate new compounds in two ways. One, using the Markov enumeration, using the identified R groups from the argon analysis. And we will also do a reaction enumeration using compounds from inventory. And then the generated structures will be compared with properties like log D and uh, PK values. And then we will select the structures which will be hypothetically measured for permeability. And then we will load the resulting data to the image. So now let's see this workflow in IGC and Plexus Connect. 
So this is Kemaxon's instant JKM application. Now I will guide you through our hypothetical compound design workflow. First, we will have to create a new project, which we will call APEC UGM. In this project, we need to define a new IGC schema in our database. This database can be a local derby, Microsoft SQL, MySQL, Oracle, or PostgreSQL database. In our case, we will use a PostgreSQL and connect to it with our user and password combination. To start the project, we need an already existing PostgreSQL database that we will connect to. After establishing the connection to the database, a structure table or in IGC terms, a structure entity is created for our cluster 64 structures. After creating this structure table, we can start to import our comp compounds from a file. This file can be in separate formats, for now it be use an SDF files with extra fields. The next step, we can also choose that what kind of fields we would like to import. After importing the structures, we can uh, take a look at them, for example, in a grid view format. The grid view is a spreadsheet-like format of our data. For cluster 64, we have columns with the ID of the structure, the structure itself, the mole weights, the formula, phenotype, permeability, and other IDs. If the permeability is higher than 100, then the phenotype is 1. If the permeability is lower than 100, then the phenotype is 0. So, that, so the phenotype of the structure indicates whether the compound is permeable or not. In this table, we can scroll through the structures and take a look at our data. However, based on this grid view, it is not easy to decide how to design compounds with better permeability. So to get the insight of our chemists, we can set new security rules in our project, which will allow other users to access the view that we share with them. After setting the security rules, we can create an account for our chemist and assign certain privileges that will allow him or her to access the data. So with this user account, our chemists can look at the data, either in IGC or through Praxis Connect, and there they can see that we share with them this view of this uh, grid view. So after creating the user, they can go to, for example, Plexus Connect, log in with their username and password combination, and take a look at the data. After logging in, they will see the schema or the project, and then also see the view that was shared with them. And this is the same data that we have seen in IGC. We have the structure, mole weight, phenotype, permeability, and we can scroll through the structures, take a look at them, take a look at the data. We have all of the 86 of them. So now, as a next step, our chemist thinks that the best way to look at the data is to link an arc of decomposition. After looking at the data, our chemist came up with a scaffold based on the most vulnerable structures we've seen to be promising. On the scaffold, there are two attachment points, R1 and R2. So we will use the scaffold to decompose our structures. As a value, we are interested in whether our compound is permeable or not. Therefore, we select the phenotype as a value field. As an extra field, we would like to see the measured permeability data. So after the argument decomposition is done, we can see our structures on the chart. On the y-axis, we have our R2 groups. And on the x-axis, we have the R1 groups resulting from the decomposition. Our chemists can now easily analyze which R combination result in structures with high and low permeability. And also visualize these R groups very easily and also the structures that they are decomposed from. By looking at the data, we can see that many of the R1 groups don't have measured permeability data. The structures which have the most data are the ones which have a phenyl group as R1. However, it can be also seen that not all of these structures are actually permeable. Since we would like to design compounds which have high permeability, we can filter out the R groups that belong to structures with low permeability. To do that, we can use the phenotype field as a filter and only filter out only the ones which have a phenotype 1. After this filtering is applied, we will end up with 41 structures which have high permeability and can be decomposed using our scaffold. It can be seen that there are many R1, R2 combinations which we do not have measurements for. This seems to be promising structures, so it might be, it would be beneficial to actually measure them. 
So then these structures, we can generate a Markov structure and enumerate it. To do that, we can go back to IGC and carry out the enumeration. However, first, we have to indicate that where our structures are coming from. We can do that by adding an extra field to our table, which we will be, which we will be called source. Afterwards, we can carry out the filtering that our can suggested. So we do the R group analysis, and we also filter for the phenotype. Using the results of these the 41 structures, the same as our can is obtained, we can uh, derive our Markov structure. The results of the Markov structure generation will give back the scaffold that our chemist used for the R group decomposition and the R1 and R2 groups, which resulted in structures with high permeability. However, our Markov structure will cover the chemical space defined by the R1 R2 groups, not only the ones which we have measurements data for. To carry out the Markov generation, First, we have to create a Markov structure table, and afterwards, we can add our Markov as a new row. The Markov enumeration then can be carried out with our derived Markov structure. We carry out the full enumeration, which will result in 351 structures instead of the 41 that we used to derive our Markov. And these 351 structures will be saved into a new structure table in our database. Then, we carry out the enumeration. And we can then uh, go and take a look at the results and the extra source field we, we have to add the extra source field that we will use later in the project to identify our structure or structure's origin that's where they are originating from so now we have the whole chemical space that can be generated from the combinations of our selected R groups then our chemist comes up with the idea that we should take a look at our inventory and check what we could synthesize from these structures so our chemist comes up with a reaction that he could use to synthesize structures with the same chemotype. Using the hypothetical reaction and the list of reactants that our chemist collected from our inventory, we can use our reaction enumeration tool to generate the structures that we could synthesize in-house. In this reaction that our chemist came up with, it's a general reaction that we can use for, uh, <coughs> for generating the chemotype. So in this reaction, the sulfonyl group of reactant 2 will sulfonate the amino group of the pyridine ring in reactant 1, resulting in products that have the chemotype that we are looking for. To carry out the reaction enumeration, we need the list of reactant 1 and reactant 2. Our chemist sent us two files which list what we have in our inventory that can be used as reactant 1 and reactant 2 respectively. So now we have to create two structure tables where we will import the list of reactant 1 and the list of reactant 2. Then we will use these tables in our reaction enumeration 2 as reactant 1 and reactant 2 respectively. Then save our results to a new database table. To obtain all possible structures, we will use a combinatory reaction and select that we only want our, the products as output. Then we run the reaction enumeration tool, which will generate our structures. We can take a look at how these look like. And then, similarly to the previous uh, structure tables, we will add the source field that will indicate that where these uh, structures are coming from. Now we have uh, 120 structures that uh, can, we can synthesize in-house. As a next step, we would like to compare the original 41 and the enumerated structures. To do that, first we have to export all structures to files. First we export the results of the action enumeration to us, the files, second the results obtained from the Markov enumeration, and last the filtered set of the cluster 64 structures are also exported. Here we export the 41 structures that we use to create the Markov structure. So to do the comparison, we have to create a new structure table. In the structure table, we include all of our structures that we have, and we will call it comparison. In the structure table, we will turn the duplicate field on. This option will prevent the user to import the same structure twice. Then we will start to import back the structures from the files that we created. First, we import the 41 structures from the filtered cluster 64 set. This will import 41 structures. Then we will 
uh, import the results of the reaction operation. And this will give six new structures to our table. And last, we import the structures created with the Markov enumeration. With this, DPLAT Python structures, it will import 310 new structures to our table. Then we can take a look at the table that we created. Here we can observe the source column that we added to each of our table through our hypothetical project. Now, using this column, we can identify the source of each structure. Using the capabilities of IGC and Kelloxon's calculators, we can calculate several physical chemical properties for our structures. The permeability of compounds can be related, for example, to the lipophilicity of the structure. Therefore, we can calculate the log D values of our structures. Additionally, the basicity and also the acidity of the compounds can be correlated with the permeability. So these are also calculated for our structures. These will be added as uh, new columns and then can be used for the comparison. To analyze the structures, we can create a new form view for our comparison table. In this form view, we can add several types of widgets, but for now, we will create an easy one with uh, two scatter plots. And also, we will add a molecular matrix and a table and also uh, other chart. Then we can take a look at the form view that we created, and then go and uh, select some of the structures which will appear in the molecular matrix with highlights, and also the other plot it will be highlighted automatically. So it, it, it can be used to analyze our results. We can also share this with our chemist, who can access it through IGC or Plexus Connect. So our chemist can go to Plexus Connect and then log in with his uh, username and password. Here, the chemist will see the project in the new form view. There, there is the chart of the log D plotted as a function of the ID and the strongest basic picking as a function of the IDs. And then we can analyze the results quite easily since when he's hovering over any of the points, the structure will appear. And then we can also go and select some of the structures, which will be highlighted in molecular matrix and also on other charts and also in the table. The table can be also modified, it can be resized, the columns can be moved if it's not visible enough that what are the header. And also, <clears throat> the molecular matrix can be used in other way. So if we select structures there, then it will be highlighted on the and they will be highlighted on the plots and also on the table. So as of the results, we can see that the cluster 64 results have log values between 2 and 5. What we can see also is that the results that, that the structures that we created from the Markov enumeration has a larger range of log values. However, they are not significantly different from the original data set. In case of the reaction enumeration, then we only have six structures, and those are not uh, that it doesn't don't, don't cover a very wide range. In case of the basic PK, these are very periodic. This is expected due to the type of enumeration that we carried out. So our chemist looked at the data and hypothetically decides that it would be nice to actually synthesize all of these and measure the permeability for them. In case of the Marcus structures, we would like to export all of the Marcus structures that we created and maybe send it to a CRO. So he filters for Marcus structures and then uh, exports the formula, the moment, and the structure to an SDF file, which he will call to CRO and save it. And then the file will be ready to be sent to a CRO. Additionally, our chemist would also like to uh, synthesize the structures that we can do in-house. So we will filter for the reaction source, select all of the six structures that we have, that we can synthesize in-house, and then similarly to the previous uh, file, we will generate the file called to, to lab. And then after generating all of these files, you can send it to the CRO and to the laboratory, and they can create the structures, they can synthesize them and measure the acid data. 
which we can actually register in IGC with the extension called AH. With MiniEdge, we can register our compounds and the rest associated with state data. After registration, the compounds can be viewed with the rest state data, for example, in the compounds form. Right now, we have 86 structures registered in this hypothetical project, which comes from the cluster 64 data center. In our case, the structures only have permeability measured with the PERMPA assay. Here we can see the average and also the results of each of the measurements. And then we can go through our structures by the arrows on the top. And we can check the samples of our compounds and also the batches that we have from them. So let's see how we can actually register compounds in Miniridge. Since we received back the compounds from our CRO, we can just open this SDF file that they synthesized. So we can select the what fields we would like to register. We can use for now all of them and then go ahead and register our structures. After the structures are imported to the stage form, we can go and handle the sorts. It means that the structures will be checked against a predefined list of salts. And then these salts will be subtracted from the structure and the salt ID will be defined and also a parent structure will be identified. After sending the salts, we can uh, go and register the structures. However, for now, we will check it first whether everything is all right with the structures, whether they are valid or maybe they have any problems. As we can see, we don't have any problems with the structures, so we can go ahead and after the validation, we can even register them. The registration probably takes a bit more time. And after that, each compound will get a compound ID, which corresponds to the parent structure and the batch code, which will correspond to the batch that we have from the given structure. So now we register the structures coming from the CRO. You can see here that each of them got the compound code, the batch code, and we also have several fields defined, although most of them are empty for now. So now that we register these compounds, we can remove them from this form. And then similarly, we can register the compounds which are coming from our own lab. First, import them, then handle the salts, and then we can check and register all of the compounds, which will also get compound code and batch code respectively. Now we can go to the compounds form and we will see that from the 86 structure, now we have 402 structures because we registered the ones which were coming back from the CRO and the ones which we have back from our laboratory. So in the meanwhile, we also receive back the assay data. The assay data is defined in an Excel file. On the experiment details, we need the SOP number and the lab notebook number, which both together combined will identify the experiment itself. For each batch code, we have to define the SOP and the lab notebook number and the result of the given batch and the given experiment with the result type, and we can also get modifiers, units, and some comments. Here we have the results for the 310 structures that we sent to the CRO. And we also have the results for the compounds that we synthesized in house and measure the permeability data on our assay. So now that we have our assay results, we can go to the assay and experiments form and using our assay loader script, we can, we can actually upload our assay and associate them with our registered compounds. So you can click on the button and look for our file, and then MiniReg will go and automatically register our essay data to the corresponding structures. It can be seen that the registration is done. You can see the date and also where the file, one name of the file is. So the CR is registered. Then we can also register the ones which was uh, measured by our own lab which will shortly appear also among the experiments. So now we have the assay data for all of our compounds. We can see here that this is the 380 compound, then the assay data is permeability, 
they can see the result and also it's coming from the CRO and this was generated from the Markov generation. Similarly, there is also a structure which was coming from the reaction and the finding is the Pampa lab, so it came from our laboratory. To summarize the presentation, we used IGC and Plexus Connect to carry out a hypothetical compound design workflow. In this workflow, we started with an initial chemical space, which we analyzed using our group analysis and used the results to generate new compounds. For the compound generation, we used Markus and reaction operations. We compared the resulting structures and selected some promising ones for synthesis by our lab and CROs. After the hypothetical synthesis and permeability measurements, the compounds were registered in Miniranch along with associated assay data. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and thank you for your attention.